Hey, it's Chris, and it's time for an update on using the iPad Pro with an external monitor. And I gotta admit, I have been liking it better than a lot of people. So I've got the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, the latest version, hooked up to a studio display from Apple, two very bright and engaging beautiful, colorful displays. One thing about this setup is that I love having the iPad sitting on the Magic Keyboard right in front of me because it's such an awesome typing experience, number one. I've always loved typing on the Magic Keyboard. That's no surprise to anybody that subscribes to the channel, but let me clue you in on a few things before we get into just kind of the usage. If you're thinking about this setup, it's all about expectations. So if you expect a Mac-like experience, you're absolutely gonna be disappointed. On the other hand, if you come in with no expectations, this is a new experience, you're gonna learn how it works and just kind of adapt your workflow to this new setup, you could end up really liking it. And beyond that, being pretty productive here, like I've been doing, I've really liked it actually. Now, a lot of people are talking about negatives. I'll let them do that. I'm gonna concentrate on the positives here and we'll kind of talk about expectations more at the end of the video. But right off the bat, one thing I really love here is the modularity. So just like the MacBook Pro, I can pack it up, take it with me somewhere, work on it, bring it back, and then use this big screen. Cool. But unlike the MacBook Pro though, I can touch the screen that's right in front of me. I can zoom in, I can zoom out with a pinch, I can drag and drop stuff, and of course, I can use the Apple Pencil, which is great even when it's just sitting there in front of you for just highlighting stuff or for photo editing. But I can also just rip that screen right off and get right into handwriting stuff or annotating or signing a contract, you know, actually drawing. Several things that you just can't do with the Mac all by itself. So the touch screen right in front of you is great because there's times when you just wanna drag and drop stuff. Also really love switching back and forth between app groups here. It's super seamless, you know, a three finger swipe left or right. I love being able to just dip into and dip out of different workflows and just really quickly switch things up. You don't have to worry as much about the Windows management here and I know that's part of what bugs people. They don't like the, the way that kind of things are handled for them and centered and and kind of resize and whatever. But you know, there's a niceness to not having to fight with something and not having to think about it too much, just kind of flowing with it. So for instance, when I'm putting together a video script, you know, I bring up several notes, different notes with research, and I do some Safari research and reference things there. And then maybe I'll pull up an outlining app, like a mind mapping app, so I can pull all my ideas together. And then I can just swipe and I've got a whole new set of apps arranged just how I want them and now all of a sudden I've got photo editing going on. So it's like I can switch in and out of modes really quickly and things stay organized how I want them and what's awesome for instance with the photo edit mode is I can take advantage of the big screen right and edit with the mouse or whatever up there or I can flip that down really easily just hit the three dots at the top and say send down to the iPad screen and I can use the Apple Pencil right there. It's really versatile. And speaking of that modularity, just to be able to take the iPad off the Magic Keyboard, get comfy, you know, if I'm gonna do some handwriting, some brainstorming, some note taking, anything with the Apple Pencil, and then just snap it right back on the Magic Keyboard, and I'm back to typing. Uh, it's really cool. And if you have a long enough cord, you know, you don't even have to unplug it. You can just keep it all hooked up. You know, a lot of people have been asking, can you have a video open on one of the screens while you're doing work on the other screen? You can. You know, I've been getting into some Japanese travel videos. It's kind of a fun escape. You can put that on in the background on either screen while you're doing work on the other one. But one of my favorite apps lately has been Readwise Reader, which is different than the regular Readwise app, which is something I've talked about before here on the channel quite a bit because it lets you kind of save your highlights from actual physical books or digital articles or whatever, and then it resurfaces those, keeps them in front of your face, so you can actually remember the things that were meaningful enough to actually highlight. Well, I love using the Readwise Reader app on the iPad because it's an alternative to Pocket and to Instapaper, but it's updated, it's modern, it has AI built in, and it's great to be able to use the Apple Pencil to do the highlighting or to make some notes using Scribble on the highlights, for instance. These are things that I can't do with just the Mac only setup right there. I mean, there's pros and cons to Mac and iPad. A lot of people default to the Mac, like if you need just one computer to get everything done and you can't afford to get both because it'd be ideal to have everything, right? Then a lot of people default to the Mac and I get it because I basically do that too. But there's people out there who can just really live in this iPad only zone 
and where it's gonna make sense to have a really great external monitor as well. So you probably already know if you're a subscriber, I really love using Jasper for AI stuff. So I'll get Jasper chat going in Safari on the iPad and then I'll just integrate it seamlessly into my writing and to my business workflow. What I really love to do is just generate some AI content, you know, brainstorm for me a list of 10 headlines for a viral video, whatever. And then just, instead of having to copy and paste, grab it and drag it over into a note and drop it. There's just a different sort of workflow that you can really dig into here in a new way. It's really a hybrid of, you know, the old school, you know, mouse and keyboard based approach with the more updated touch and stylus approach and finger approach. What I can tell you is that I really haven't felt very limited by the setup in terms of what I can get done here. YouTubers are always like, well, I can't do, you know, Final Cut Pro on here, it's just a tragedy. And the thing is most people aren't YouTubers and they don't use, you know, professional video editing software. Even so, DaVinci Resolve has landed and you know what, that's kind of a weird thing because it doesn't open in the full screen it stays like kind of iPad sized on your external monitor. So that's weird. There's some kinks to get worked out here in terms of how all the apps work, but it's an ecosystem that's building out all the time. And for that reason, I feel like people have been overly harsh on this setup because if you think about it, the Mac that does everything that all these people want it to do, it's been around for so long. How many years have Macs been around? You know, and the iPad is a relative newcomer into this space. You know, the Mac ecosystem is sort of like a grandpa and the iPad accessory ecosystem here is kind of like the baby. It's taking its first steps and Apple's trying to be thoughtful about it. You can, you know, tell me maybe they're doing it to try to juice more money out of people or maybe they actually really care about the tablet experience, whatever, it doesn't even matter. And things are new here. It's taking a while to build out this ecosystem. So right off the bat, you know, it's not gonna be for everyone right now, but as it builds out in the coming years, it's gonna be harder and harder to say that this is a setup that people shouldn't be considering because really, honestly, I've had a lot of fun with it. So if this kind of setup at all piques your interest, then I would say if you can go into it with like an open mind, then you might find that you really like this setup. And on the other hand, if you're like, I'm stuck in my ways, I'm used to doing things the Mac way, and you just know already, then this probably isn't gonna be your thing. And in that case, you might just be the kind of person who wants to have one of each, you know, get them both. They're better together, obviously, universal control, right? But bottom line, can most knowledge worker type of people who don't need some sort of specialized app get away with just using the iPad with this external monitor? I would say yes. I did basically all my work on this setup, like a week's worth of work with this, and it was cool. Not saying it's perfect, please don't misquote, but I am saying you can get some actual serious work done here. I gotta let you know, we got a hidden gem of a newsletter. Uh, thousands of people have subscribed to it, but I don't want you to miss out on it. If you're in the Apple ecosystem and you really wanna put app and accessory discovery on autopilot, then let us send you an email once every Friday. It's real short, right to the point. You'll find some great new things that you can use. Also, the productivity course is rolling right along. It's getting close, I promise. But if you wanna get more done in the Apple ecosystem with less burnout, then get signed up for a notification. I'll shoot you an email when it launches, which is gonna be soon. I'm just getting ready to record that thing. All right, I think that's it for this video. Let me know what questions you have down in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one. Later.